This presentation is titled Chords on the Grand Staff. The Grand Staff consists of a treble and a bass clef, and they are connected by a bracket on the left side that shows that these are all part of the same system. Pitches that are in the same chord are lined up vertically on the staff or on the same beat. So here's beat one all rainbowed out for you. And that would be one chord between those two staves. We've got C, E, G, and another C. In four-part voice writing, as, such as a chorale or a hymn, you'd find in the hymnal, the notes on the clef with the stems in the same direction denote the different voices. So the treble clef top voice, stems going up would be the soprano. Treble clef bottom voice, stems going down alto. Bass clef stems up tenor. Bass clef stems down bass. So there are your four voices. To analyze the harmonies, we just want to consider all of the pitches vertically on the same beat. So again, here's beat one. Uh, as we said before, uh, those are all lined up together. Next, we want to be aware of doubled pitches. Since this is four part voice writing and a triad only has three pitches, a lot of times you will see doubled pitches. That's totally fine. Let's see what we have here C, E, G, and C again. So there are two C's. Those are doubled. That's fine. We just want to remember that. There are only three unique pitches in that. So the three pitches we're going to be considering are C, G, and E. And then we'll just kind of ignore the soprano C for now. Next, we're going to want to stack the pitches in thirds. And it's a good idea to use a scratch pad for that. And we know that C, E, and G will stack up in a C major triad. So we're going to label that chord based on the root note. Remember that the root note is not necessarily the lowest pitch. So since that's a C major, we just put our C under there for our C triad. Finally, we're going to determine the bass note and the inversion, if any, and add that symbol. Since C is the root and uh, we've got a C triad there, it's in root position, so we don't have to do anything further. I'll just put root there to help remind us. Okay. Then we do the same process for beat two. We're going to consider all the pitches on that beat. And we're just going to look out for doubled pitches and take that into consideration. So here we go. Soprano is D, D again. So there's already our doubling, a G, and a B. The three unique pitches are B, G, and D. Again, we'll ignore the soprano. It's something I like to do anyway. And then we're going to stack our pitches in thirds. Those three would stack as G, B, and D. So we've got a G major triad on beat two, and we're going to label that. Then we need to determine the bass note and if it's in an inversion. Well, G is the root, but B is the lowest note. Since B is the third of the triad, that's first inversion. So we would add our six to denote that as a first inversion chord. Next, beat three. Considering all the pitches and being aware of doublings, we've got F, D, A, and A. Okay, so our three unique pitches from the bottom up, A, D, and F. Stacking those up, we get D, F, A. We're going to label that chord based on the root. Well, a D major triad would be D, F sharp, A. So the third has been lowered. That means it is a D minor chord. So we will label that properly. We're going to determine the bass note and the inversion. Well, D is the root, but A is the note in the bass voice. So that means that we are in second inversion. And we would apply the 6 4 to denote, denote the second inversion D minor chord there. And then finally, beat 4. We're going to be looking at F, D, B, and G. Oh, great. They're all unique. That's interesting. And interesting also that they all stack in that same order, G, B, D, F, from low to high. So we're going to label that chord. A G major seventh chord would have an F sharp. This has F natural, so the seventh has been lowered a half step. That means it's dominant. 
and we know that for a dominant chord we just have to put the 7 there and since G is the lowest pitch and also the root this is in root position so we just leave it as G7 so there you have our first measure of four-part harmony analysis G, uh, C chord G major and first inversion D minor and second inversion and then a G dominant seventh chord couple quick things here. It doesn't matter how much space is between the pitches. Especially if you look at that last um, beat in this measure. Uh, G, B, D, F are exactly the same order that you would spell the seventh chord, but look, there's an octave between the bass and the tenor, and then again, another octave, uh, more than an octave, between the alto and the soprano. Okay. Uh, it would also be interesting to note that um, middle C would be one ledger line below the treble clef and one ledger line above the bass clef. So that would be uh, a unison pitch if we saw perhaps the tenor going up from the B to a C or the alto going from the last D down to a C. Uh, that middle C is right in between those two staves. Also, we're just considering the pitches that are present and then what the bass note is. It really doesn't matter the upper voices, what order the pitches come in. Secondly, if uh, we transpose that whole exercise up a whole step from C major to D major, we would look like this and we would have two sharps in the key signature. When you have a key signature, you really want to be careful that you apply the sharps or flats to the notes that it apply, they apply to. Otherwise, your chord types will be wrong. For instance, if we ignored the sharps and looked at the first chord, we would have D, A, F natural, and D. That would be a D minor triad. However, we know that this should be in D major since we transposed it up. So I recommend that you go through and mark your sharps or flats on the notes that they apply to before you start your analysis, because those will help you remember. One more time, there are your steps in writing notes and analyzing chords on the grand staff.